Good Eve, Cade, Mila, Falsha, folks, you're very welcome to a live stream, a driving test Ireland live stream. My name is Dane Ty, approved driving instructor with the RSA, registered with the RSA, and I am here to share information with you so you can help it so I can help you achieve your driving goals. In this stream, I'm going to be sharing with you lots of information, lots of driving test tips. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you some stories from other learners about their experience of the test and their experiences with some of their driving instructors. I will be going through this report sheet. Um, I got some good feedback from a girl who unfortunately failed and I'll be sharing that information with you so you don't make the same mistakes. So lots, uh, lots of information to be shared with you uh, and I'll be answering your questions as well on the test or on learning to drive or whatever and, and if I can answer it uh, here in the live stream I will. So a few comments in already, uh, Fionn Duncan, hello Fionn, you're very welcome, Mark Sowler, aloha, hello to you Mark, um, Fionn asks, Dane what do I do when there's cars parked and I want a signal for a turn at the end of the road don't want to be giving a mis a misleading signal. Depends where you're going there, Fionn. So if you're going right, um, you can still indicate for the park cars, but just just keep it just keep it quick, like you know. Just I always say, if there's a line of park cars, just indicate for the first park car, and then once you're beside the first park car, knock it off, finish with it. Because if you indicate any longer, you could be telling people that you're turning right. Now, if you are turning right at the end of the road, that's fair enough. Um, but if you keep the first indicator for the park cars quick, then maybe turn them off and then maybe re-indicate for the right turn or left turn, if that answers your question. Feel free to clarify that with me um, for further down if you'd like. Um, Evan Barry is well there. Um, welcome along. Evan, passed my test last week after watching your videos. Dane, thanks so much. You're very welcome, Evan. Congratulations on your uh, full European license. That's great news. Um, and I'm glad the videos have helped you along the way. Nicolina L. Hi, Dan. Having my test tomorrow. So happy to see this right now. That's great, Nicolina. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know here. Email me, daintai at gmail.com. Um, if I can help you with your test, I will be delighted to do so. And the best of luck to you, Nicolina. I'll be sharing lots of tips here in the next hour and a half or so. Wojciech. Dzień dobry, Wojciech. Um, I hope you got that email I sent you. Um, uh, hi, Dan. Thanks for the email. Not the kind of answer I expected, but I guess you know better, and we cannot agree on every single thing. Well, we we probably won't voice check, but uh, let me know what you didn't didn't agree on. Um, it's voice check was was comparing some waiting times between Poland and Ireland, and a few other things on the new kind of um, new things the RSA are looking at, which I'm going, one of them I'm going to be talking about now actually as well. A pilot scheme that they're going to be talking about so I will get to a few more comments I'm going to do one more there Rachel um, let me see Rachel 246 there before I get back to this um, why would I get docked for observation changing lanes two things Rachel not enough mirrors maybe even too much mirrors possibly not um, not a, a, a quick blind spot like a quick sideway glance so here's the deal if you're changing lanes first of all if ever the road opens up into two lanes and there's two lanes going one way always start in the left lane okay unless the tester says something different but always start in the left lane if you want to change lanes then the key thing is you have to double check your mirrors you can't just check the mirrors once or twice and go across you have to double or even triple quadruple check them so you check the mirrors indicate check the mirrors again move across gradually but just before you move across it just before you move the wheel just give a quick little sideway glance like this like that and then just keep checking the mirrors make, make sure you, you're, you're doing the mirrors before and after that little sideway glance quick one so middle right if you're going to the right lane that is middle right just just kind of quick snappy ones so to answer your question Rachel it's hard, I, I'm, I, it's hard to be specific but if you lose marks on observation changing lanes it's probably down to not enough mirrors possibly not the not getting the little sideway glance as well sometimes if you get too much of a blind spot it could go against you as well. It, it should only be a little quick quick blind spot, quick sideway glance there, but usually it's down to a lack of mirrors. 
when doing that. Feel free to comment again, Rachel, if you have any other questions or if you want to tease it a little bit more, okay? Okay, I'll be getting on to the rest of them there now in a sec. So, very welcome, folks. Great to see you all here. Just trying an evening live stream now because most of you folks seem to be watching videos at this time on a Monday and Tuesday evening. So, I'm going to see how this goes. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll try and get to them. Um, I want to say a big, big, big girl of Mila Mahagut uh, to you folks who are supporting me by, by PayPal. I really, really appreciate it, folks. And it's getting to the stage where I can comfortably make one or two videos a week, do one or two, maybe three live streams a month, because I'm getting tremendous support from you. So I really appreciate it. If you would like to make a voluntary donation, the links will be in the description um of this video and my all my other videos as well so thank you very much for the support i will answer any questions if you email me daintai at gmail.com i will get back to you with a breakdown of your report sheet or answering any other questions and then subsequently if you want to make a voluntary donation please feel free so thank you if you do like this video don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button you can also click the bell notification as well so you can be notified whenever i upload fresh content um, if you want to apply for your test or you want to manage your driving test do it on the My Road Safety online learner portal, okay? MyRoadSafety.ie. I have a common question up there as well. What is the rule with the yellow box? A little photo of there, I presume you can see it. Um, the rule with the yellow box is you're not allowed to stop or park or block the yellow box. The exception is if you're turning right, as long as you don't obstruct other traffic, okay? Now, I want to explain that to you because I one or two learners were asking me about saying they got a mark on this. So... You can go into the yellow box when you're taking a right turn at traffic lights, for example. So let's say you're at, you're waiting at lights. Always stop at the first white line at lights. If it's red, of course. If it's red, if the light is red, stop at the first white line. When the light goes green, full green is the circle light. Okay, you do you do not have to wait for the the arrow light. You can just go complete your turn or at least go up into the middle. If the middle is a yellow box, like the photograph there, you can still go up into the middle if you're the first car and wait for a safe gap. To complete your turn so it's okay to wait or stop on the yellow box if you're taking a right turn let's say at uh, traffic lights or if you're on the main road but be very very careful if you're coming on if you're on the minor road and you're coming onto a main road you do not have an automatic right to stop on the yellow box then even if you're turning right for example let's say you're at a stop sign so you're at a stop sign taking a right you're on the minor road and you're looking left and right because the other traffic have the right of way. Your stop line, they're coming this way, they have the right of way. So if there's a yellow box on the main road, so there's a yellow box just in the area in front of your bonnet of your car, you do not have an automatic right to go up and stop in the middle of that yellow box because you're taking a right, because you're in danger of obstructing other traffic. And that's the key thing. You can stop in the yellow box if you're turning right, that's the exception, but as long as you don't obstruct others. And if you go on from the minor to the major road, and obstruct others by sitting kind of awkwardly across the road blocking maybe one lane or half a lane it's not it's not going to look good and you're going to lose marks okay so in summary the yellow box uh keep it clear no stopping no parking no blocking the box the exception is if you're turning right as long as you're not obstructing others okay i'm pr pr pretty sure you're going to be asked about the yellow box either in your theory test or in the theory part of your driving test so make sure you know the rule on the yellow box okay all right then, folks, as I said, I will get back to the comments soon, and I'm going to go through this report sheet here as well in detail. Got great, uh, got a great breakdown from a learner who unfortunately failed her test. Um, got some good advice from her, good info from her, and she got some good info from the tester as well, okay, at the end. Um, so I'm going to start now by going, giving you some kind of, how do I, updates or kind of news as such, okay, so... The first thing then, a learner emailed me there recently saying that he wasn't taken out on his driving test because he didn't do the antigen test. It's very, very important, folks, that you understand at the moment the way things are. You must have taken a COVID-19 antigen test um, within the, in the 24-hour period before your test. Um, the driving tester is going to ask you this, so make sure you've done that. And as long as it's negative and you don't have any symptoms of COVID or cold and flu or any of that kind of stuff, everything should be fine for your test as long as all the other things are okay. So this guy was too honest. He said he hadn't taken a COVID test. Tester said, sorry about that. No test. 
the rule is you have to have an antigen test, negative antigen test before the test happens. This should all be on the email. I asked him this. I, I said to him I was in via email. Did you not notice? Like this is the this is the latest rules. Surely they said it to you. So he went back and checked his email then, and he he found that it was mentioned, but it was mentioned below the sender's um signature. Let's say so it was kind of down towards the bottom of the email. Now I'd be kind of thinking that's probably a good place to have it. You're more likely to see it at the end. Sometimes I skip down to the end of emails that'll have it. So um just make sure you're aware of that folks. You have to have the antigen test done. I do, as far as I'm aware, they don't ask for proof. They don't ask for a photo of the antigen test. They, they, it's just a verbal question. Is answered, did you do it? Yes. Was it negative? Yes. That's what I what I think. Uh, anyway, if anyone wants to clarify that, come back. Let me know in the comments. Um, next one then. Make sure if you're doing the test in your own car, and same goes for the instructor's car, that your front windows must open, be able to open fully, okay, for ventilation purposes. If it turns out that your front windows are not able to be open fully that's going to be a problem okay now it might vary from tester to tester but for the most part if a tester sees that the front windows are not able to be opened that's going to be bad news your test could be cancelled and you may lose your fee so just be careful on that one i'm sure most of you out there have cars that have perfectly functioning front windows but uh, make sure your driver's side and your passenger side especially is working okay because some testers will be happy to have the window down a little bit and other testers will probably insist that the window be down the full way. It, it can depend on the individual. Next, very interesting update. The RSA, that's the Road Safety Authority, who govern driving tests in Ireland, who manage them um, as well. They are doing um, a pilot scheme on independent driving. So I foresee that in the very near future, we're going to have an independent driving section of the driving test that means that the tester will bring a sat nav type in a place probably going to be pre-programmed in he will ask you to follow the directions to get to this place on the sat nav and you have to follow the directions um, to get to this uh, geographical location you can choose your own route from what i gather you can go whatever way you want um but you have to you have to sorry let me rephrase that you have to follow the directions of the sat nav i meant i'm i was confusing it there with something that i do if i can just go off on a slight tangent for a second to clarify my my uh, mistake there when i'm giving lessons i often say to people okay you're here now let's go to this location in wexford and you can choose your own way of going there but i'm just going to be quiet and watch as but that's i was just confusing with my own independent drive that i do with people sometimes no for this the pilot scheme is that the rsa examiner will bring in a sat nav um, the sat nav is a basic TomTom Tom 52 start unit. I, I'm no idea about sat navs. I use Google on my phone for all this kind of stuff, so I, I, I'm not sure if that's a good model or a basic model, whatever. But that's the model that they will supply. It will be supplied and set up by the tester. It's going to be a pilot scheme in Dundalk and Waterford. Okay, um, so it will be done by getting the learner to follow the directions of a sat nav uh, for at least approximately 10 minutes of uh, driving so it will be a pilot scheme that will be taking place in waterford from the 16th sorry from the 25th of april to the 6th of may in waterford then it will also run in dundalk in county loud from the 16th of may to the 27th of may okay so if anybody is out there in the sunny southeast of waterford or in dundalk who has heard about that or maybe has any info info on that um let me know it's probably a bit early now at, at this stage anyway but if you are in those two counties or those two towns of waterford and dundalk you might in the future be participating in a pilot scheme that's all the information i have I'm, i don't have any any more than that but it is interesting i think it's good that the driving test is evolving and trying new things i think we should have parallel parking I think we should have reverse parking as well. We should have kind of a lot of these things that they have in, in England. We should have them here. Um, so that'll be great. Uh, uh, looking forward to seeing how that goes. And I will update you on any developments. So that's an interesting pilot scheme. As I said, if I, if I hear any more, I'll let you know. Also, folks, have you learners out there, have you tried the driving test waiting time estimator tool? I'm curious. There is a driving test waiting time estimator tool on the my road safety online portal 
uh, for those eligible who don't have an invitation for a test uh, to book it. So they haven't actually got a, a specific test date, but they're eligible to book the test, but they don't have a specific invitation. Have you tried that in that um, estimator tool and how have you found it? I'd be interested to find out. I think it's a great feature. I've seen it on the thing. I can't test it myself because I have to, you have to have a driver number or a learner apartment number or something, so it's not going to apply to me. So I would be interested in hearing how you found that estimator tool. So let me know in the comments section, please, folks. Um, also, how do you find the My Road Safety app? To my eyes, it looks very professional, very well laid out, and uh, very nifty. So let me know your thoughts on it, on how you find the whole process of applying and managing for your driving test. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts um, on the My Road Safety um, online portal. Um, I ran a poll there about two or three weeks ago on what do you want from your ADI, or in other words, approved driving instructor. And I gave a few options. I think there was about a thousand votes. 43% said you would like your instructor to be more patient and understanding. 27% said to explain things in a better, more articulate way. And 19% said to cut the small talk and just get on with the lesson. That's kind of the way I operate. As soon as I, as soon as I meet the learning driver, maybe a hello, how are you? Uh, might talk about the weather or about Liverpool or something, but then it's straight down to business. When I'm giving lessons to people, I'm not there to make friends. I'm not there to be impressed. All I want to do is to make you the best driver you can so you can reach your goals and pass your test. That's the way I operate anyway. Small talk is down to an absolute and utter minimum. I am there to teach people how to drive. I'm not there to make friends. So I thought that was interesting. Um, some instructors out there have their own way of doing things. They might not be the most patient. They might get frustrated from time to time. People have been saying in the comments, probably because they can't explain things or articulate things properly. Um, so that's where that comes from. Um, some other questions, stories, and incidents from learner drivers that I've been receiving, I wanna share with you. Um, one poor chap was emailing me about his insurance disc. Now, I felt sorry for this fella, but... Um, so anyway, he was getting ready for his test. All was going well, doing his lessons. He His insurance was all fine. He got his insurance disc in the post. He decided, or he noticed that the insurance disc wouldn't fit in the little sleeve on the front windscreen. So what did he do? He cut the insurance disc on the side just to make a bit of room. But unfortunately for him, he cut the green part on the what is it the right side i suppose depending on what way you have it but he, he cut off the green part and then when he turned up for the test the tester says your insurance disc does not have the little green slip on the side therefore it's not valid there's no test the test was cancelled he lost his fee had to reapply again and he was very very disappointed uh, i explained to him i didn't i i explained to him listen i know it's a bit of a how do I say it? It's a bit of a finicky rule. It's a bit, a bit of a bureaucratic kind of stuff you'd probably be associated with Soviet Russia. But unless the insurance disc has the green slip on the side, it's going to be questioned, at least by the tester, and your test will probably be cancelled. So if your insurance disc doesn't fit in the little kind of sleeve in the front windscreen, just fold it over, gently fold it over, and try and squeeze it in that way. Do not cut off the green thing on your insurance disc, okay? Don't do it. If you do that, the test will be over and you will be have to reapply okay i know it's a bit archaic i i wish they had some kind of scanning device where they could just kind of scan it and see that it's valid but just keep an eye on that folks i don't want what happened to him to happen to you okay um a few people then have been asking me about a diesel car versus a petrol car and then you know they're saying that sometimes in the diesel car it's very very tricky going to fourth gear whereas in the petrol car is fine in fourth gear 50 kilometers i mean and then sometimes you might take a turn in second gear in the petrol car, but then in the diesel is a little bit kind of, you know, it feels like it's going to chug or conk out and all that. So I've been getting a few questions on that recently and over, over the last number of years. And to answer your question, as I'll always say, it, it, it's always going to depend on the car you see. I've given lessons in diesels and petrols, mostly petrols, I'd say. And I completely understand where the insecurity and confusion comes from. Okay, now... It's going to depend on the on the car, okay? So let's let's just put it this way. For going 50 kilometers, if you're in a diesel car, you should probably be okay 
going to fourth, fourth gear in a diesel car if it's a nice flat road maybe on the slight downhill but if it's kind of slightly uphill you might be better off staying in third gear in the diesel car that's just a general observation for you it, it does depend on the car you see the same taking a left turn taking a right turn if you're taking a turn in a diesel in second gear and it's slightly downhill and the bend is kind of more gradual it's not like really sharp like that well then you should be okay in second gear on the more gradual ones but you might have to come down to first gear if it's really sharp kind of corner so my message to you is do not think of it as a one size fits all answer when you're comparing diesel with petrol cars for going to fourth gear or going doing a junction in second gear or a ramp i mean normally you would take the ramp or the junction in second gear that's that's the, the normal thing you would do because the car feels better in that but i know in a diesel car it might be a little bit different because diesels are not really the diesel cars are kind of meant for open roads like motorways you know like if you're driving on the motorway between dublin and belfast or something that's where you want your diesel car not really meant to be doing they're not really designed for driving tests in urban areas where you're doing lots of speed bumps lots of corners uh, lots of mini roundabouts you know that's that's not what diesel cars were designed for so you have to judge each road individually when you're taking a turn and you're saying will i trust my diesel in second gear or will i go to first just judge the turn is it sharp maybe go down to first gear if you don't trust it if it's more gradual and downhill you should be okay in second really same on the straight if it's a straight road and it's nice and flat and downhill you are either flat or slightly downhill you should be okay in a diesel and fourth um if it's uphill and there's a few little bends and you know maybe you're better off going to third at the end of the day you have to judge the car for yourself because you know the car better so you have to make your own judgment just judge each road each junction each straight judge it individually there's no one size fits all okay don't forget to think of the hills as well because the hills play a part as i said uphill needs more power downhill not so much okay the car might be more likely to struggle on an uphill uh, as opposed to flat or downhill um the nct so two people have been asking about the nct um you have to have a valid nct disc folks okay you have to have a valid nct it's not enough to have um the date in place so let's say your nct is out on the 1st of march but you have a test booked in for the 5th of march well if your test if your driving test is the 3rd of march let's say your nct is going to be out of date by a couple of days now just because you have an nct test booked in a few days that's not going to cut it for the tester okay unless your nct disc is valid and up to date there will be no test okay so make sure you're aware of this because i know there is a you know there is a slight issue with waiting lists for the nct exact tests on cars so just be careful on that um keep an eye on all your discs insurance tax and nct and if it's if you're getting a bit close to the to the expiry just try and book your nct to prevent that happening or maybe use another car or use your instructor's car okay but just to just to clarify you have to have a valid nct disc in your front windscreen it's not enough just to say that it's out of date but i have a test coming up that won't work okay that's not going to cut it okay some more stories and more um info for you yes a lot of people i've noticed are getting mar are getting losing mar well i won't say a lot of people a certain cohort of people um are losing marks on progress okay now as always it's always going to depend on the individual you know not, not everybody's going to do this lose marks on progress but i find people who are originally from let's say the indian subcontinent so we'll include india pakistan bangladesh we'll throw in mauritius there and sudan and all and so certain east african countries as well for good measure i find without without stereotyping these people um, i find that people who are originally from those parts of the world seem to have um, a mistaken impression that well if I just drive extra slow on the Irish roads, the examiner will will suddenly have an epiphany and realize, oh my God, this guy is such a safe driver, I'm just going to pass him. Listen, folks, in the real world where most of us live, that's not going to happen, okay? If you make an effort to drive extra slow on the straight, so if it's 50 kilometers on a nice normal straight road, and you're going 30 or 35 because you're trying to show the tester that you're nice and careful, I can be pretty much guarantee you that you'll be you'll you'll end up losing marks on progress on the straight. If I was a tester and I saw someone behaving like this, 
I'd say I'd, I'd, I'd probably just fail him on the spot anyway, to be honest with you. Because that kind of stuff would really piss me off as someone who's been doing driving lessons for a long time. Um, if I was an examiner now, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't get pissed off in lessons. I'm actually, very, I'm actually very patient. But uh, I noticed, I just noticed it um, without categorizing people too much. People, I've had people from, say, Pakistan or India who have done the reduced EDT. So that they only have to do six lessons, for example. And they might have had, they might have a full license from India or Pakistan or one of these places or Sudan. And then they only have to do the, the, the six lessons here and then they can get a test. So it's kind of like a reduced EDT to recognize the fact that they have a full license from their home country. But the problem is they might have got that full license from their home country because their father knew the chief of police in the, in the local city or something like that. A lot of, a lot of these, a lot of the standards of driving tests in some of these places wouldn't be the same as what it is in Ireland. Okay. So they're kind of, some of them, they're kind of surprised at the standards that they have to get to on the Irish roads, you know, what? because they, for all I know, they could have, they could have bought their licenses over in, uh, over in India or somewhere like that. Okay. So sometimes it comes as this kind of lack of knowledge, maybe it's a cultural thing or something. What I'm saying in simple language folks is do not make any effort to drive extra slow or to wait too long at junctions. If it's safe to go, just go. If it's safe to get to 50 kilometers on a 50 kilometer limit road, then do that because that's going to show confidence. It's going to show decisiveness. And as long as you're not doing anything dangerous or doing anything um, untoward, you'll be fine. Okay. Um, just be careful of that because you know, you're, if you're, if you're in the habit of driving too slow to try and show them you're careful, you, you know what you're doing? You're actually insulting the intelligence of the testers. Okay. The testers here uh, are professional. They're very well trained have a job to do and for the most part now there's always a few bad seeds i know that myself i know very well there's a few bad seeds but for the most part the examiners are very professional and very fair and if you go around driving extra slow to try and prove something to them that you're safe you're what you're doing is you're insulting their intelligence so don't do it just drive normally and with confidence and you'll be fine okay so next one um, yes, I got another email from a lady who sent me an interesting one I hadn't heard before. I suppose it's supposed to show you learn something new every day. She was saying that she'd done her 12 lessons, all fine, but most of her practice over the previous, let's say, five or six months before her test was done on rural country roads. So she was kind of accustomed to driving a little bit faster, let's say, than you would on the urban roads. And because of that, when it came to her test, she actually she was actually failed on speed. Now she was failed on other things as well, but but there was a kind of a there was slightly more marks lost on speed. So when it was on the straight, uh, turning left, turning right, I think, um, basically she was just driving too fast because she was used to driving on country roads where the speed limit is typically maybe eighty kilometers, and you're kind of going at higher speeds on rural regional roads than you would be in you know in town with. With, with speed bumps and mini roundabouts around, you know. So it just reminded me to reiterate to you, when you're getting ready for your test, make sure that you drive on different types of roads. So you drive on town roads, rural roads, dual carriageways if you can. You cannot drive on motorways until you've got your full license, but you can still drive with a full license driver or with your instructor on a different variety of roads. And that's gonna be good for you. It's gonna improve your skills going to improve your confidence and therefore you're less likely to be caught out or surprised on the test if you go on a, a different route that you're not expecting and the same goes for reverses and turnabouts pardon me you should try your very 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 best in your practice and in your lessons to do different reverses different turnabouts do a reverse on a downhill where you're mainly using the brake and the clutch so you'll be using the clutch in fully and coming on and off the brake clutch in fully on and off the brake. This is when you're reversing downhill, I mean, okay? When you're reversing downhill. But when you're reversing uphill, you have to kind of maybe use a little bit of acceleration and very, very gentle clutch control. Same on a turnabout. Try a, turn, try a few turnabouts on wide roads where you're comfortably able to steer and do it in tree, but then also try it on tight roads. So you're not surprised then if you do get a tight road on the test that you hadn't been, you know, that if, if, you're, if you're practicing a different variety of roads you're less likely to be caught out okay so just try to remember that folks because if you focus on the one thing too much in your practice and your lessons and then the tester takes you on a different route you know you're gonna you, you could find yourself a little bit a little bit surprised 
and cut out and we don't want that um another thing then which i found very surprising was a, a, a gentleman or a, sorry a lady it was emailed me she was getting lessons with aviva driving school and i i mean aviva are great they've, they've got some wonderful um insurance options for people and I'd, I'd encourage you to to check them out axa as well i mean if you're looking for uh as a learning driver to get insurance there there really are great options but she was getting her lessons anyway and the aviva instructor said to her oh you cannot do your test in your own car now you know that because you have an electric handbrake so the aviva driving instructor said to her you're not allowed to do your test in your car her own car because of the automatic electric handbrake that's the the handbrake or parking brake specifically where you just kind of you know you, you just kind of pull up the button like you flick up the button and it kind of engages and disengages automatically when you accelerate and bring the clutch up so he was i think he from what i remember in the email the instructor said oh because it's automatic it might not count for a manual uh, car or something like that but that's complete nonsense because the, the gearbox is manual okay the gearbox is manual it still has first second third fourth gear so she's perfectly fine to do it uh do her driving test in that car and if she passes then she'll still she'll still have the manual um full license now, as it turned out she didn't pass unfortunately because she made some mistakes but she ended up doing the test with in the car with her with her um electric automatic handbrake and it was absolutely fine tester never said anything about it so the message i'm saying to you folks is if you have a car that has an electric automatic handbrake you are perfectly entitled to use it for your driving test there's nothing wrong with that it's the same if your car has the reversing camera you know the way you have a, some some cars some modern cars have reversing cameras and parking sensors they're absolutely fine to use them i've had people using them over the years never a problem your car's technology should be embraced they make driving safer and easier and you're still going to have to prove yourself to the tester but if your car's technology can help you well then you might as well use it okay so don't be afraid to use your electric handbrake electric parking brake okay it's absolutely fine to use okay um, as long as your gearbox is manual you'll be you'll be tested and, and passed or failed in a, in a manual car the poor girl though she wasn't sure how to how to use her um automatic electric handbrake because she was saying to me oh then i have to i have to i have to actually let my i have to actually let my hand break down automatically i have to let it down physically she was saying uh, and i was saying to you no that's that's this is all by email now i was saying no no you don't you don't let it down yourself the whole idea is it of these automatic electric handbrakes is that they do it it's automatic like so i explained that to her in an email anyway and i said to her, listen when you're moving off in, an, in a car with an automatic electric handbrake give it some acceleration bring up the clutch till you feel a little pull on the car now if the car is still not moving then all you have to do is give it a bit of extra acceleration and i promise you she'll move away she emailed me back a few days later and said that's exactly what happened she she feels much more confident with it now um so just on that folks if your car your car's technology is fine use it it's good to use it um you're fine to use your electric handbrake automatic handbrake a lot more cars have these now and as we go forward a lot more cars in the future will have them okay don't be afraid let's not be a luddite here don't be afraid of technology it's good it makes the road safer for everyone just briefly on the reversing camera if you have a reversing camera in your car and you're reversing around the corner or doing a turnabout as i said it's fine to glance in it every now and then it's fine to give a quick look just don't look there all the time though do you know what i mean like you, you, like when you're reversing around the corner or reversing on your three point turn turnabout it's much 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 more important to be looking in your mirrors and over your shoulders but when let's say you're going from the left shoulder to the right shoulder it can be an absolutely good idea as you're going across just to get the left shoulder maybe the mirrors maybe glance at the reversing camera there then maybe and then back up to the mirrors and shoulders you know you can get it while, while you're moving your head across get an old glance in the reversing camera just to kind of see if it can help you line up the curb or help you um to turn to know when to turn the wheel nothing wrong with doing that as long as it's balanced and you don't you don't look at it too much okay all right then is that the main tips we have there then yeah that's it there then folks um yeah so i was very surprised that a viva instructor was saying to her now you, you know you can't use your your car I'm, I'm not i mean some driving instructors kind of want to want you to use the driving instructor's car because they see it as uh the norm let's say inverted commas 
it's not the norm at all i always say to people if you feel more if you're doing your driving test and you feel more comfortable in your own car well then use your own car you save a bit of money and you have that extra comfort of knowing where everything is and that can that can translate into more confidence okay you do not have to use the driving instructor's car okay if they put you, put you under pressure to do it don't fall into that trap they could be just trying to get a bit of extra money out of you you know because they they could be charging you 100 euro for the use of the car and a lesson if the lesson is extra or whatever so just remember folks as long as your own car is roadworthy is legal you have your your insurance your tax your ncd is all up to date you have good tires you have no warning lights on the dashboard all that kind of stuff use your own car if it's fine okay don't feel under pressure to use the driving instructor's car um just on the viva guy i don't know what I, I said to the email I, in my email to the girl i don't know whether he was he or she was trying to get you trying to trying to squeeze more money out of her or whether he just didn't know that the that you could use the automatic electric handbrake i don't, I don't know which is worse but there you go anyway okay folks so that's there the main tips and updates from people i hope they were able to help you i'm going to get some comments here now catch up on a few comments and then we might get into this analyzing of this driving test report sheet here are some marks here that you need to be aware of okay let me get to that there now i have everything covered there okay then so let's get up back to some comments here then so rachel was there and then we had sid Sidra Nawab, I think, just popping in to say a huge thanks. You're very welcome, Sidra, if I'm saying that right. Uh, good to have you here, and thank you for your gratitude. Uh, Chintu Singh, I think. Thank you for all your videos. You're very welcome. I am very... Oh, hang on. I am very happy to share my knowledge with you so you can achieve your driving goals it is my pleasure and if any of you out there want to make a voluntary donation um as a show of appreciation feel free links in the description to this or any of my videos you can do it by paypal i am hoping to set up revolut soon because uh, i know some people have said that's easier or handier for some people so I'll, I'll certainly try and look into that very very soon but you're very very welcome sidra and shinto if i'm saying that correctly mark Sauler Sauler, i think is a um who applied on the 8th of february and is waiting for an invite yeah that's that's kind of okay sounds okay sounds the norm in tala i'm afraid i will forget the lessons if i wait too long that reminds me of a good point i want to make folks when it comes to getting driving lessons like say mark's case there he he's applied for his test on the 8th of february okay so let's say you have a driving test on the 30th of March, okay? And let's say you're, you're only going to be getting about four or five lessons. I would advise you to have the majority of those lessons in the week before the test and try and have the last two very, very close to the actual test day. So if I had a learner and they were getting, let's just say four lessons, I'm just picking four as a number. I mean, if you can get more, all the better, like, but... Some people only get one, some people get four or five, some people get more, but let's say four. So I would definitely, definitely do a lesson the hour before the test. So let's say you have a test at 11 o'clock. Do a lesson at 10 o'clock that morning, okay? Do it. It'll get, your, it'll get your brain set. It'll get some bad habits out of the system. It'll get everything operating and it'll act as a great warm-up, I believe. Now, I know some people don't like that. A small minority of people just rather would rather not do that because it might make them more stressed. I understand that's no problem, but if if you're open to that, you should definitely do a lesson the hour before the test. You should also do a lesson the day or two before, and then maybe another one a day or two before that. So if you if you load the lessons close to the test date like that, I think it's a great way to kind of manage them because the information will be more fresh in your head, and therefore you're more likely to drive better. And with more good habits because the information is kind of more fresh okay so that's just a tip on that now if you're doing the 12 EDT lessons EDT is essential driver training well that's different they should be spread out more maybe with a week or two between the lessons so you have time to practice and absorb the information that's different but when you're doing a driving test it is okay to get a cluster of lessons very very close to the test date because I think it'll just kind of help you prepare better and get you in the zone get you driving properly 
Sidra, again, I passed my exam with your videos. Well, I'm very glad to be able to point you in the right direction, Sidra. Congratulations on your on your pass, and now you have a full European license to show for your trouble. So well done to you. Nicola Proctich, I think I'm saying that correctly, um, it says Nicolina Sretno, not sure what that means, but how good to see you there, Nicola. Mohamed Riaz, hello, I passed my test last week, your videos really helped me, thanks me. You're very welcome, Mohamed Riaz, if I'm saying that correctly. Well done on passing, great achievement. You've proved to be a great driver, and wishing you a lifetime of safe travels, Mohamed. See me. Hi then, my, how many minor mistakes can you make on the driving test? As many as you want, uh, but just don't go too mad, you know. I, on the driving test, you're going to have grade 1s, which are the green ones. You'll see it on screen, they're green. Uh, grade 2s is the blues. They're kind of like medium marks. And the reds are grade 3s. are serious, very serious, like dangerous marks, okay? Now, the minors don't... Excuse me. <coughs> The minor mistakes, the green ones, they don't actually count to the overall um, result. So even like on this report sheet here, it looks like she got one, four, six, six minors. But they're not the reason she failed. The reason she failed was because she got too many of the grade twos. So the minor marks, the grade one marks, don't actually count to the overall result. But you need to be careful, folks, because what a lot of people forget or don't realize is that if you get too many minor marks, um, let's say you make two two minor mistakes, you get two minor marks, two grade ones, and you then you make what, what would be considered a third grade one in the same area. Well, look at reaction to hazards there, just under halfway down on this sheet. She has two there on reaction to hazards. Now, maybe she made a third minor mistake on reaction to hazards, but the tester had nowhere to put it because you can only give a maximum of two grade ones, so he, he ended up t turning it into a... Uh, a grade two then possibly i don't know for sure now but but possibly that's what the way the tester might have been thinking so to answer your question the grade ones don't count to the overall result but if you get too much of the if you're if you make too much of the one mistake it could have an impact even subconsciously on the tester but generally they don't count to the overall result it's the grade twos and grade threes that 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 cause the people to uh fail the test um, Rebecca Mason, hi then, do you know if the lifting of COVID restrictions will impact um, driving tests? No, I don't think it's having any impact. We haven't been told anything from the RSA. Um, as far as I'm aware, you still have to wear the face masks. You will still be getting the phone call um, while you're waiting in the car. But the waiting, the waiting areas are open now to driving instructors and to people to come into. So you can come in and use the to people come in, come in and use the toilets and all that kind of stuff. But um, the hand hygiene, the face masks, they're all staying as far as I'm aware, um, because it is very close contact with people when you're doing your driving tests. So uh, that's uh, staying. If I hear anything else, I will let you know. But um, that's the latest I have with that. Um, let's see what else have we got here. Um, Mike VFX. Hi, Dane. In my car, I have a child seat. Is it okay to leave it there when going to the test center or take it away? It's usually fine, Mike. Um, I don't uh, see any problem with that. I've had people over the years um, with child seats in the car. Absolutely fine. Um, sometimes, though, you may have um, a supervisor might be accompanying the tester <coughs> now it's a it's a rare enough event but a supervisor could come on the test with you and he or she could sit in the back seat so try and just make sure that that you ha have room for at least um at least one uh, person in the back seat anyway uh, just in case a supervisor is coming but i i don't think that'll be a big deal anyway um uh, mike isn't it yeah because uh, people have done tests with child seats in the back before and it's 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 never been a problem okay it's just just want to let you know that there's a small chance that a supervisor could accompany the tester on the test as well and just for the rest of you don't be surprised if that happens it is, it is part of the ongoing um quality control mechanism that the rsa have to make sure standards are standards are kept high rv um hello then i recently failed my driving test for the third time and i have come to the conclusion 
that my mild dyspraxia is causing me problems while in the test. Do Irish driving instructors learn? Oh, I think there's a bit missing at the end of that. Um, yeah, I just, you see, when you're learning to drive, everybody is going to have unique needs and some people might get confused with directions and some people might have a kind of anxiety issues and that kind of stuff. So you kind of have to tailor the lesson to the individual person. But um, I think you're asking, do, do Irish driving instructors learn something about that? We, I, we don't. We're not taught very much because we're all self-employed, you see, and the RSA don't really um, engage with us that much unless they're kind of making a press release maybe or they're looking for money office for registration. Um, so there's not anything specifically on that, but it, it would all depend on the individual instructor to be more familiar with people who might have certain issues like dyspraxia or getting with anxiety or something like that. But uh, feel free to email me on that, uh, daintai at gmail.com if you want to talk about it further, RB. Um, Nicolina there says, Havla Nicola, I'm not sure what that what that means, it could be some other language maybe. Fionn Duncan there again, so if there's a car on the left, just before the left turn at a junction, will I indicate before or after the parked car? You can find fine to indicate before so in that situation there you're, you're worried about not giving a misleading signal so you're you're wanting to um is it a left turn he's taken yeah so, he's just, so you're taking a left turn i presume from a major to a minor road there's a parked car um on the left just before the left turn so i would always advise there if you want to divide it into two okay first of all deal with the parked car okay by maybe checking your mirrors, giving a quick indicator, moving out gradually, just a very, very quick indicator. And then once you're beside the car, or very, very close to the car, say the front of your car is level with the with the um, other car, the park car, then you would check the mirrors again and indicate left to take the left turn. But you see, you might not need to indicate for the park car, because if you're not moving out over the halfway line, let's say, there's no need to indicate, so you can just move out, and your the fact that you're out a little bit is enough of an indication, and then you can just indicate left end to take the left turn. So it kind of, <coughs> excuse me, it depends on how much you have to move out, but there's no problem with splitting it up a bit. So if you're moving out a good bit, quick indicator to the right, that deals with the obstruction. Then check the mirrors again, indicate left, that deals with the left turn. Okay, so hope that answers your question. It will vary from you know depending on the junction, depending on 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 how the parked car is is uh, sitting there. You know, Sandra Pika is it? Passed my test a few months ago, literally because I watched all your videos leading up to it. Well, Sandra, yeah, I'd say you're sick of the sound of my voice by now. I'd say, but congratulations on passing your test. YouTube is a great learning resource. If I'm looking to do something, or if I if I have a program on my computer and I and I uh, I don't have the uh, the will to read a book or something, I'd often go onto YouTube and say, "How do I do this?" or "How do I do that?" And it's a wonderful learning resource, and I'm glad I'm able to play a part and help to point you in the right direction there as well, Sandra Pika. So I'm glad you found the videos useful. Um, knowledge is power, and that's what I want to provide you out there. Plenty of knowledge so you can achieve your driving goals. And you can do it all for free here on YouTube without paying 40 or 50 euro for lessons and wherever, however much the lessons cost in your local area. If anybody out there would like to make a voluntary, and I repeat, voluntary donation by PayPal, you can do that. It's much appreciated, as I said already. Arjit Sharma, hi then. If the yellow box is before the traffic lights, do the rules stay the same? Yes, if the yellow box is before the lights, you should stay, you should stop before the yellow box. Don't go in and stop on the box, even if your plan is to turn right. You must keep the yellow box clear because that yellow box could be there for a reason. Maybe maybe there's a it's there to kind of keep keep it clear so the traffic on the other road can come in and maybe take a wider turn. I'm thinking of one junction locally in Wexford where, where that's the case. You come up to lights um, and then for about... 15 meters before the lights, there's a big long yellow box, kind of like the like what, I, what you see up there in the picture actually. Um, 
so when the light is red you stop well before the white well before the yellow box because the yellow box takes up space but the reason that's there is because the road that's kind of coming from the other side from the three o'clock side let's say it it kind of it's a narrow road so it gives them the yellow box there and it kind of keeps that kind of space clear so that somebody's taking a big wide swing like a bus or a truck or something like that the, the they can kind of use that free space that the yellow box provides to make the whole situation safer but yeah don't stop in the yellow box only go into the yellow box once the light goes green okay Okay, a few more comments here, folks, and then I'm going to get into this report sheet, and I'm going to share with you some great information that the girl told me about why she failed her test. So one or two there. Um, let's see, HH, I got six out of 11 grade twos last week for driving too close to cars. Last time before that, I got five grade twos and failed for one grade three. This time made no sense to me. Yes, yeah, sometimes you're going to pick up marks and you're going to wonder where did that come from? You know, what what happened there? I made a video a few, probably months ago now, on dealing with parked cars because I, I see it a lot in, in the lessons and in the emails. And I created this kind of ref <coughs> pardon me, reference points. So if you're overtaking a, a parked car, in my car, the door handle has to be kind of um, lined up with a certain part of the other car, uh, the park car, and then I know then when the door handle is there, I know that I'm uh, at least at door length. I'd have to show, I'd have to, it's kind of hard to explain, but I would say in your car that you drive, okay, drive your car, park it somewhere beside another car, make sure you're a door length, now, you might, you might have to reverse back and then come back in again just to kind of ensure you're a door length. And then, just spend a little bit of time kind of glancing to the left like that, because most of the park cars are going to be on your left. And just make a note as to where your kind of window, you know the win, the, the top of the door frame where where it, be, where, it become, where it turns from a door into the glass, that, that little bit there above your door handle. So wherever that meets the other car then, you might notice that it's kind of flush with the other car's door handle, for example. Then you know, okay, that means I'm about a door length then by using that as a reference point, okay? I've explained it all in the video. I, 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 it's a recent video on um, on clearance, and you'll see it in that. But I know it can be a tricky one to judge if you don't know your reference points there, so I can I can certainly understand where you're coming from there. Okay, Mac, Mac Andre, and then we'll come back down to a few, and then I'm going to get on with this uh, report sheet here. Mac says, hi, Dana, watch your, all your videos. Can I ask... Are you going to fail your driving test by failing to do the reverse around the corner? Are you going to fail your test by failing to do the reverse around the corner? I'm not really sure what that means, Mac. The reverse around the corner is part of the driving test, so you have to do it. Um, I'm not sure why failing to do it. If you don't do it properly, you could fail. But as you see from the report you hear, there's, there, I mean, there's three types of marks. There's Grade ones, which is minor, grade twos, which is kind of medium, <coughs> and then grade threes, which is serious or, or dangerous. So there are the different levels of marks you can get on the reverse around the corner. For example, if you don't look behind you and the car comes very close, you could lose a mark on observation or yield. If you go up and mount the curb, you could get you could fail on competency. But if you only get a little bit closer to the curb and don't hit it, you might kind of only get a grade one or a grade two mark. So it all depends on the on the situation, but um, it is possible to fail on the reverse if it goes particularly bad, but it's just as possible, probably more possible, to do absolutely fine on the reverse, maybe only pick up one or two, one or two minor marks, and then you can still easily pass the test, even if the reverse doesn't go to plan, okay? Hope that answers your question there, Mac. Um, I'll get on to Paulie and Brian and Fionn Duncan again there in a few moments once we deal with this driving test report sheet. So, let's have a look. This is a driving test report sheet of a girl who unfortunately failed. Now, she didn't fail by much. There was no grade trees, first of all, so that's good. That means there was no serious marks. No, nothing that was dangerous or potentially dangerous. She failed because she got too many grade twos. A little bit of a cluster there on hazards and position more so. I'm going to explain to you what she said now, okay? Um, the faults that she knows she made and what the tester told her, okay? So here we go. 
position that roundabouts, okay? You see that there's, there's, there's two marks, grade one and a, and a grade two. So she found in her test that she'd done a lot of roundabouts, um, at least five in quick succession at one stage anyway. And a lot of the time she was asked to take a right turn, which is probably a bit more challenging because there's you have to watch out for your position more because you're kind of in lanes maybe and also you're spending more time on the roundabout. So, um, so she was going right a lot and the tester said to her she wasn't right enough on one occasion. So she was kind of in the right lane, she says, but she wasn't fully in the right lane. Now the tester explained it was okay because there was no traffic beside you. But if there was traffic beside you and you know it could have been a bit of a bigger problem so i'd say she probably only gave her a grade one on that one um, but she did say if the left lane was busier that could have been a bigger problem so if you're driving in multi-lane traffic on the one-way street like 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 a roundabout for example with two lanes don't be to the left don't be to the right try your best to drive in the center of your lane okay so if you're on a dual carriageway or you're going around a roundabout you need to be in the center of your lane. Don't straddle the curb on this side or that side. Don't straddle the white line either side. Be central, okay? Um, another roundabout then, um, she stayed in the left lane the whole way around. I'd say this was the grade two now in fairness. Uh, even though the exit she was taking was to the right of 12 o'clock. So she should have been in the right hand lane here. Tester said that you were too focused on your indicators and therefore your position suffered so this is where you have to be aware folks of the 12 o'clock rule okay so watch out for your road markings watch out for the signs beforehand if your exit is to the right of 12 o'clock on the roundabout you have to indicate right and use the right hand lane if there is one available there won't always be but if there is you should use it if you don't you could lose marks on position on the roundabouts okay so the sign will help you because if 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 the sign is like pointing straight up well then it's the, the roundabout is straight but if the sign is pointing like a little bit to the right let's say at two o'clock kind of thing well then the sign is saying that the say the second exit for example is to the right it's not straight it's to the right and therefore you have to indicate right and use the right hand lane so be aware of the 12 o'clock rule 12 o'clock rule is a very important rule at roundabouts okay Position turning left and position stopping. So these two were kind of linked very closely, okay? On position turning left, she swung out too wide on a left turn. Um, she ended up kind of in the middle of the road temporarily before she kind of swung back. It was like, like a swan neck, you know? But this was very much linked to position stopping because when she was going left, she was actually in the position for a right turn. I think she got confused with the left and the right which prompted me a few weeks ago, I got this email a few weeks ago, so it prompted me to make that video on left and right confusion, where I gave the tips on how to avoid confusion with the left and right, by visualizing L for left um, as the road comes down and meets your bonnet, and R for right as the road goes that way, like the letter R. You'll see it on my most recent video um, as well anyway. But uh, yeah, so because she was too much to the right, that meant at the T-junction, she ended up swinging a, bit, swinging a bit wide on the left turn. So that's a classic case of where two faults are very much um, linked together. Position stopping and position turning left. Okay. Sometimes the tester might just kind of bundle them as one, but he gave her two separate ones, that it appears here anyway. Uh, moving on then, observation changing lanes. So the tester said here that uh, she lost one mark only, but the tester said, you gave too much of a blind spot. You were practically looking out your back window, which is a big, big no-no when you're changing lanes. And the tester said that you did it twice. Uh, and now she only got the one grade two, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe you kind of, maybe she kind of let her away with it or something like that. But as I said at the start of the stream here, folks, if you're changing lanes, it's fine to get a quick sideway glance like this. See that? Just a quick one. The chin doesn't go beyond the shoulder. Because mostly it's mirrors you have to be worried about when you're changing lanes. But if you get a big dramatic blind spot like this when you're changing lanes, that's a complete no-no. You're taking your eyes off the road too much. You can't do that, okay? Just rely on the mirrors mostly and a quick sideway glance, okay, when changing lanes. So the reason she, the reason she lost the mark on observation changing lanes was because she got too much of a blind spot. And the tester was very specific on that. Um... The observation turning left, she's not sure about that, but she she does remember doing one or two junctions a little bit quick 
and this probably meant she didn't have enough time to get the required looks in. Hazards, this was an interesting one. So she lost a couple of marks on hazards here. So as she was coming off, first of all, she was on a roundabout and it transpired that there was a horse and trap in front of her. So they met on the roundabout and then the horse and trap ended up in front of her as they were exiting the roundabout. So she, she kind of didn't see any horse and trap initially and then all of a sudden she was behind it as she exited the roundabout. So the horse and trap was in front of her after the roundabout. So at first she stayed behind the horse and trap. She stayed well back and the tester said this was good. This was the right thing to do because you were able to see ahead and you weren't too close to the back of the horse and trap. But when the learner driver saw that there was a queue of traffic building up, she kind of got a bit anxious, panicked a little bit and then went to overtake on a bend when she couldn't really see ahead. Now, there was no car coming. It wasn't a completely blind bend. It was more of a misjudgment rather than a disaster. And that's why it's only a grade one here. Um, but if you notice there, there's overtake safely as well. So I'm sure it's linked to that as well. Um, maybe maybe the tester marker on that rather than hazards. But she she's telling me it's hazards here, but I'd say it's I'd say it's probably that. But anyway, it was only a grade two, so it wasn't like it was grade three. So she overtook the horse and trap on the bend. The observation while she could see ahead, it wasn't ideal. And when she was actually in the process of overtaking it then. She needed to accelerate more. She was too slow. This dra dragged the whole thing out. And she said then it kind of knocked her confidence as well. So, you know, sometimes when you're overtaking something, you kind of have to give it a bit of juice and try and get the overtaking maneuver over and done with because you don't want to be out on the road, on the wrong side of the road too long, you know. So that's that. Um, other mistakes then, she doesn't really remember much else, but she does remember doing a few ramps a little bit too fast. And she remembers going into a pothole as well. So that could have been marked under hazards there. You see the minor ones and hazards. And then gears, um, she knows that she went from third to second on one stage. But unfortunately, she ended up in fourth gear instead of second. So she probably didn't move the gear stick to the left enough. And the car just chugged a bit. But she corrected it anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. But the car did chug or struggle a little bit. So we're pretty sure that's where the gears mark comes in there. So yeah, let's go down through the faults there anyway. We, I think we've covered a, a fair few of them there. So rules and checks and technical checks there. Just grade ones. So she must have got a question or a road sign wrong there <coughs> on the rules and checks. Technical checks, maybe it was something to do with the, uh, like the, the lights or the wipers or something like that. Or maybe she got a question wrong that was on a technical question like to do with the oil or pointing out some certain parts of the engine, something like that. But it was no big deal. It was only grade ones. Like. So position of roundabout, I think we covered that. I think we, we, as I said there, it appears that she was kind of straddling the lane too much. Like she, she wasn't in the middle of her lane. And as I said, if, the, if there was another car there, she, if there was another car in the lane beside her, she would have got too close to them. And also she didn't know about the 12 o'clock rule. So even though the exit was to the right of 12 o'clock, she was kind of stayed in the left lane the whole way around. So that was not ideal. Position turning left, we, we mentioned that. And position stopping. Um, so when she was turning left, she was too much to the right. And ended up swinging a bit wide. Two on position stopping actually. So she obviously stopped in the incorrect position or in a position that wasn't ideal. So now, now that could have been maybe, maybe got too close to the car in front maybe. Maybe didn't give the car in front enough room. Um, maybe she stopped in the in some hatch markings or some yellow boxes like up up there. Um, but somewhere anyway, she maybe was a bit late stopping or not not paying attention maybe to road markings. But uh, that's where that grade two happens. Observation changing lanes in. So as I said, it there was too much of a blind spot there. Uh, she just needed to get more mirrors and a quick sideway glance, not a big dramatic blind spot like that. That's not what you do when changing lanes because you cannot take your eyes off the road too long when changing lanes. Observation, turning left, you know, she mentioned that she might have rushed a left turn. Basically not enough looks like this. So if you're coming up to a left turn, you need to kind of be looking, even when you're 40, 50 meters beforehand, just be kind of scanning it like that, you know, just kind of. Get get a flow, get a, a feel for the flow of traffic. Uh, make a note of any signs or markings. And then when you're at the line, then make sure you're keeping the head moving left and right. Keep the head moving, and then just as you're going, then just get so as you're as you're going as as the front of your car is kind of turning. Make sure you get the one last look to the right. So if you're going left, one last look to the right. 
if you see any marks on observation turning left, it's usually down to not enough head movement. Um, and she said she might have rushed it, so probably didn't give herself enough time. Hazards, we probably know that there's a few there um, that she already mentioned. So, for example, she said that she went into a pothole that she could have avoided. She went over a speed bump a little bit too quick, and she was caught behind the horse and trap as well. Probably didn't react well to that. So whenever you see a reaction to hazard, it's something to do with um, a lack of a proper reaction to something that's ahead of you. This is why reading the road ahead is so important and not to get too fixated on what's in your mirrors or too fixated on what's on, on one specific thing I mean. So as you're driving along, just say to yourself, okay, there's some road markings there. I see a sign there, there's a bus stop there. There's a car gonna pull out there. Um, there's a yellow box up ahead. You kind of have to be talking to yourself and reminding yourself of what's ahead all the time. So you're kind of training your brain to react to these things. Overtake safely, probably that is pretty much down to how she dealt with that hazard, the horse and trap. She, the tester said that she overtook on a bend and she didn't do it quick enough. So she dragged it out and that's where that happened. Progress at roundabouts, too slow. Um, either didn't pull off quick enough or maybe going too slow around the roundabout. Tester said that she was a bit too focused on her indicators, so maybe that kind of took away from the progress. But anyway, there was some kind of a lack of uh, speed on the roundabouts where she was going too slow. And then gears, as we said, she got the gears mixed up once. She ended up in fourth instead of second. The car struggled. And the steering probably down to maybe crossing the hands maybe or maybe letting the wheels slide through the hands or maybe she just momentarily lost control of the steering wheel so but there was something something up with the steering anyway that's why why she lost the mark there she doesn't remember it now but it was uh must have been something anyway if the tester marked her down so it was basically down to that folks uh just too many grade twos um but it's not a disaster. I mean, it's it's. I mean, she she should be well able to recover if she gets lessons, and if she practices on different types of roads, and if she kind of you know puts the work in. Hopefully, she'll be able to to come out next time smelling the roses. So, and good luck to her next time. Okay then. So let's have a look at some comments there then, folks. And um, before we get on the home straight here. Um, what was my last? Polly, Polly Mac, hi then. Started getting a few more lessons. Hope I pass it this time. And Carlo, Carlo, God, are you hearing any bad stories from Carlo? I've heard the percentage is very low. Yeah, yeah, I've heard a few interesting things from Carlo, but I've one or two people email me during the week saying that they had a very good experience there. Carlo is a bit of a black spot for for testers over the years. Now it could be fine now because you know they often testers are often kind of rotated around anyway, so. I just remember having what hearing one or two bad stories about that place. I'm not gonna sugarcoat for you and, and insult your intelligence by pretending everything is fine. I never gave lessons up in Carlo now. But some of the testers up there would rotate between Wexford and Waterford and Carlo and Gorey, so I kinda got to know them a little bit over the over the years. But um I think it's not too bad now. I think the most important thing is not to get too hung up on testers is to do your best, focus on the things that you can control because you cannot control what tester you get or what side of bed he or she is going to get up out in the morning. All I would say to you is try and have faith because nowadays the testers are much more friendly, much more professional and customer service is a big part of the driving test now. So have faith, the system is good and it'll look after you. Um, Brian K, good man, Dane, Ty, legend. You're very welcome, Brian. Glad to be of service, uh, hope you're well. Um, Fionn Duncan, so if there's a car parked on the left, just before the left turn I intend to take, will I indicate after or before the park car? Indicate before the park car if you're moving out a good bit, but don't bother indicating before the car if you're only moving out a little bit. It all depends on how much you have to move out, you see. You haven't you haven't told me, Fionn, how much you move out, you see. I, I can't give you a one-size-fits-all answer because the question is very, very broad. So if 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 you're only if you're only moving out a little bit, but you're not crossing the halfway line on the road, don't bother indicating right. Just focus on the left turn. But if you're moving out significantly, like like at an angle like that, and then coming back in, well then you should indicate right for the parked car, just briefly, just a brief one, and then left for the left turn. 
Okay, so hope that answers your question. It does depend on the situation. Um, Nicola Protic Fion short indicate for right. Yeah, sounds good to me, Nicola. That's what I was saying. Before you overtake, then indicate for whatever direction you're doing. Couldn't have put it better myself, Nicola. It's hard to say because I, I can't visualize it. I can visualize it on roads that I drive on and have driven on, but um, it's, as I always say, it's going to depend on the situation. But but uh, that's the best advice there. Um, Maze. Let me say, Mazam189, is it? Hi, Dane. God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, the work you are doing here is helping us immensely. I recently cleared my driving test, and your videos were very, very helpful. I am very happy to hear that. Thank you very much, and congratulations on passing. I These videos can help point you in the right direction, but make sure you take credit yourself because you're the one that had to turn up and prove yourself to the tester, and you did that very well by the sounds of it, Mazem189, and congratulations, and thanks for your kind words. They don't ask for proof, though, that's right. If you're doing the antigen test, you have to do, you have to kind of have an antigen test done 20, within 24 hours before the test, but to the best of my knowledge, they don't ask for proof of that, okay? So... Sana Kowish, hi, passed my test by watching all your videos, thanks a million. Are you sure you watched them all now? I nearly have 200 videos, I don't I don't think you watched every single one of them now on every single live stream because you'd be, you'd be here a long time. But congratulations Sana. Uh, well done on passing, great achievement and safe travels to you. HH, they send in the text message, I think you're talking about the antigen test requirement, I think? Yes about the antigen test but they don't ask for proof when you're there there's a good comment now folks for you so they will remind you in the text message and the email about the antigen test requirement but they're not going to ask for actual proof they're just going to i think they're just going to verbally ask you okay christopher hayden hi then just wondering i'm nearly finished um doing my lessons just wondering how long is the list to get a driving test well christopher that is a good question. Fionn says it's not that long, three or four weeks, depending on what test center. Because that's true, um, what Fionn says, it, ca it can depend on the test center. But you see, Christopher, there is a new tool on the RSA website. And when I say RSA website, I mean the one on top here, myroadsafety.ie. That's where you go to manage uh, your driving test booking. And you can set your goals. And you can also kind of check out how long uh, the waiting list is in your area. So why don't you log on to myroadsafety.ie there, Christopher, and check out that waiting time tool. And if you do not have an invitation for your driving test, you'll be able to check it out by putting in a few basic, a bit of basic information like your learner permit number and all that. But from hearing comments from people, I don't think it's that long. Like most people that apply will, will get it, usually get the date within you know, within eight or ten weeks usually. But it's it's always gonna depend on the test center. Um H H if it doesn't work since you get an invite if, if you fail it doesn't work since you you'll get an invite after six to eight weeks. I think that's the so didn't get a chance to check. Oh yeah that's the, the waiting time tool. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Because if you reapply after failing uh, you should get it within six or eight weeks. Yeah, that's that's the plan now, which is a great system. I think, and I'm, I'm, I think the the website looks really good. The My Road Safety that I website learner portal online learner portal uh, looks very very uh, well laid out, very professionally done. So I hope you're all finding it easy to navigate. Foy check. Tom Tom Start fifty two is a is a sat nav model used on UK tests. Yes, that's a good point there, Wojciech. Since the introduction of the SatNav as a tool during independent drive, I wasn't aware of that yet. So the as I was saying at the start of the stream, the RSA are running a pilot scheme in in April and May in Dundalk and Waterford on independent driving. So the tester is going to set up a SatNav, type in a location, and then the learner driver will follow that location then, and the driving tester will look at him as he's driving and analyze them and see that he drives well because it's it's a modern part of driving now uh, following satna so it's a great it's a great kind of development it's already been done in in britain so that's it's good to see it coming in here and 
thanks for clarifying that model uh Wojciech. i wasn't sure that's the one they use in the uk but not surprised at the same time susan i used the estimator oh great susan used the estimator about three to four weeks ago it estimated the 21st of march However, I got invited to do my test about a week later, and it's for this week. So, yeah, and this week, what are we? We're in February now, aren't we? What day is the 22nd? So, kind of 24th, 5th, 6th February. I see. So, probably a few teething issues there. It's probably not going to be 100% accurate. But um, hopefully, you'll do well, Susan. Hopefully, it's not too soon for you. Um, if you have any questions, email me dantai at gmail.com. I'll be glad to help you out. And the best luck to you. And thanks for letting me know that, Susan. Costel Minion. My time was estimated at around 7th of the 7th of March, but I got an invitation to pick an appointment two weeks ago. So another one that got it um, sooner. Interesting. Thanks for that, Costel. Nicolina. My estimator was for the 21st of March. Got an invite on the 2nd of the 2nd. So it looks like the invite, the estimator is being a little pessimistic then. Thanks for that, Nicolina. Max says, don't you think there should be a lesson on how to use and behave on motorways? Absolutely, Max. The, there should be lots of things like parallel parking, the independent driving, a commentary drive would be great too. Lots and lots of things, including what you said there about motorways, yeah. Even after you pass your test, there should be an obligation to do one or two lessons on, on motorways, yeah. Because I think the driving test has to evolve and change and get better as time goes on, like they do in England. Because that's the only way you, you, you improve and maintain road safety. Because driving habits change. Take the you know the, the automatic electric handbrakes now on cars. The reversing cameras. Um, the sat-navs, you know. The, we need to evolve with dri as driving evolves, so does so. As driving evolves, so should the test. If you fail, is it mandatory six or eight weeks? Or it depends on the centre. You though, they try and give If you reapply after failing, they'll try and give you a test date within six or eight weeks. It's not mandatory. You have to reapply first there, HH. Uh, that's the way I think it works, uh, which is good if you want to get it quicker. Um, it's tr trying to fast track your, your application. Cal R. Izian, I think. I booked my driving test last October and I used the estimator tool and I said my test will be April but I ended up getting it in early February so looks like the estimator is um, estimating it too far ahead um, and a lot of people are getting tests earlier which is good because you always have the option anyway folks of if you're not ready for it like you can just you know you, you don't have to take it you can just kind of not accept your initial invitation and then you can go back on the waiting list you know so you don't you don't have to take it but I'm sure most of you want to take the invite if you want to get the test done and dusted. Brian K. Yup, the Russians. Yeah, God, gotta love the Russians. Um, Costel. Driving test on the 28th, Costel. Well, all I can say is the best of luck to you. You're doing it in a Volkswagen Golf 1.9. Oh, God. Uh, do you think it's too fast for a learner or does it really matter? Costel, it's hard for me to say, as you can imagine. Like, I always say... If you're happy and comfortable doing your test in your Volkswagen Golf 1.9, then go for it. Because that confidence that you have from driving a car that, that you're used to is precious, I think. Okay. Now, if you're used to it and it handles the roads well, it should be fine. In, in most cases, the car that you drive in will be fine. Um, I, I don't see any problem. As long as you're happy doing it, that's fine. Maybe if you did a, a, a driving lesson with a driving school a driving instructor and, and you try to drive their car and uh, they might have a smaller little petrol car like like a nissan micra or or a ford fiesta or a you know an opal Corsa like what i have and you might find that that car might be a little bit more suitable to town driving so you could that's one option you, 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 could, you could try the instructor's car see how you get on and maybe use that if you feel better in it but costel it, it i don't know what I'm not an expert on the Volkswagen Golf, but if you're happy with it, go ahead with it. And that's the most important thing, um, as long as it's roadworthy and legal and all that kind of stuff. And the best of luck to you, Costa. Satish Kumar. Hi, Dan. Following your videos for driving tests recently, and they are great. That's good news. Satish, you're very welcome. Uh, glad to help. I have taken my driving test and failed with 11 grade 2. So I didn't fail by much, just by 3 there mainly on position on turning right what is the correct position when you're turning right 
to the side road. Well, Satish, that depends now on how wide the road is. But if you're turning right to the side road, like that's what I presume you mean going from a from a major road into a minor road, you should be keeping to the right. So keep right in your lane, but just not too much to the right. Uh, so you have to try and be in a position that means you're close to the right, but you're not kind of obstructing oncoming cars and you're making an effort to allow other cars to overtake you on the left if it's safe. I like it all depends on the on the road you see. It all depends on the, the size of the road. Why don't you search my video on position turning right? Just type into YouTube Dane Thai position turning right and I, I've I've made a detailed video on that and I'm sure that'll help you. Nikola Protic, uh, 50 kilometers, absolute minimum in fourth gear for my Octavia diesel. Yeah, I'd say that that's a good point. Normally, for a diesel, you'd need to be at minimum 50. Like some 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 diesels, you, you might even be at 55 or 60 to get the fourth gear. It does depend on the car. But as I always say, just if you are driving a diesel car, it is okay to use it in the test. I prefer people use a petrol car because it's more suitable to town driving. But if you're using a diesel and you're comfortable with it, just go with it and you know the car better than anybody so you make your own judgment on that if you need to wait in third gear for a bit longer and then go to fourth maybe at 55 instead of 50 that's okay because you're judging it based on how the car feels um to you um dian then then is the best to, oh thank you very much thank you for your videos i passed my test because of you have a great day well i helped point you in the right direction maybe but you ha you're the one that has to turn up and do the test, so you have to take the credit for that. Uh, I just like to provide information to help learners achieve their goals. So, Deanne, congratulations to you. That's great news, and I'm glad to be able to be of assistance to you. Nicola Protic, is the car, if the car is struggling, change to lower gear up to the driver. Who is this Nicola Protic? This, this lady is, is a rock of sense here. She could actually do my job, I think. She's saying all the right things here. So if you're driving a diesel, a car is struggling, well then you as a driver have to react to it. Look, look at the report sheet here, react to hazard. So you could you could use that as a hazard. Like if the car is is, is threatening to act a maggot and kind of struggle a little bit, well then what you have to do is react, okay? Because that, that means you, you need to kind of take preventative action. So if you feel the car struggling, just gently drop down a gear, come slowly off the clutch so you don't have any kind of jerks and jumps. And then that be the way to deal with that, like Nicholas says. John Duncan, Dane, how do I take a right turn when there is a car on the left that forces me to position to the right? <laughs> I love this guy. He's like a dog with a bone. I have to, I have to handle you, Fionn. You're not, you're not giving up on this. I, 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 kind of, I have a, I have a newfound respect for people like you. So let me just read that comment again. There. How do I take a right turn when there is a car on the? <laughs> Sorry, when there's a car on the left that forces me to position to the right, how do I not cut the corner in this situation? Yeah, sorry, it is a different question, actually, sorry, to the one you've asked, but um, just brought a smile to my face there, Fionn. Um, let's hang on there. So, Fionn is asking, how do I take a right turn when there is a car on the left that forces him to position to the right? How do I not cut the corner in that situation? So here's the answer, Fionn. You do your best, okay? You do your best. If you have no choice but to cut the corner because of the bad driving or because of the hazards of other people that's not within your control, then you cutting the corner will be fine. It's not ideal, but it, it will be fine for the purposes of the test, okay? Now, if you can avoid cutting the corner, that's great. Avoid. Try your best to avoid it. But if the reason you cut the corner is because you're trying to keep a safe distance from other people causing obstructions, then that's fine, okay? That's absolutely fine. Maybe you could go, you could try to go down a bit further, maybe do a little bit of a swan neck maybe to try and avoid cutting the corner. But as long as you do your best, it should be fine. So I hope I answered that there, Fionn. It, again, it, it's hard for me to visualize because I'd have to kind of see, I'd nearly have to see it first, like, but... Sometimes there will be cars on the left that kind of force you off track. And remember, that's not your fault, okay? It's not your fault that the car is there, but you will be tested on how you deal with that car. So, for example, 
sometimes by coming out a little bit earlier means that your angles are more smoother like like that whereas if you come out later your your angles are kind of sharper like that so just try and bear that in mind and um, it does depend on the situation but the best look to you Fionn. the mighty duck um will masks be worn after 28 yes to the best of my knowledge yes there's been no indication from the rsa that the mask wearing requirement is going to be eased i think that's staying uh, for driving tests along with hand washing and everything else uh, so uh, that's what I uh, unless if I hear any different mighty duck I'll let you know um, either in live stream or on my YouTube channel somewhere Arjit Sharma NCT if renewed under 90 days if renewed under 90 days of expiry do we get a new one year validity form from date of test or current expiry date plus one year i think if if that's the case rj you have volunteered for an early nct so i don't think you'll get the one year three months if you know what i mean i'd need to check that i i'm not an expert on nct's but if you if you if you voluntarily do your nct earlier i don't think you're going to get the credit for it okay but you're better off ringing up the nct or check the web the website for that one okay okay folks gonna just finish up on the comments here now and uh going to call it a night there soon i want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in i hope you found this live stream useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i'm going to try and finish off the comments here now folks briefly um let me see hh current if not mistake i'm not sure what that refers to hh uh, what was your previous comments on um yeah i'm not sure but i'll uh, get back to me on that um big stir has find something funny okay the mighty duck yes what's the yes to again the mighty duck will mass be worn after 28 yes they will be worn after 28 to the best of my knowledge uh dong laputap that's a, what a great name uh dane thank you your tips i passed my driving test i will always watch your videos before my test great that's thank you very much glad the videos helped you um god bless you you say great god bless you too um and well done on passing done great great news for you shout out to dane thank you mark Sowler, Sowler or Sowler, or whatever however i pronounce that best wishes mark fion duncan um fion <laughs> another curveball from fion god who is this guy Fion has reg plates that are technically not legal. Will the examiner care? That is a good question, Fion, and I would not um, take the risk. I haven't heard of it before being a problem, but then again, to the best of my knowledge, um, everybody that I, that I can remember has turned up in with the driving test with, with normal regs. Uh, I, I can't answer that definitively fun because a lot of these things is actually down to the discretion of the tester believe it or not like for example one tester might might kind of turn a blind eye to it um another tester might make an issue of it but if they're technically not legal i wouldn't be taking a risk on your driving test okay um you might let me know how you get on with that Fionn. um the rude something gaming weird question but if i have a car with a uh paddle shifter is it considered an automatic when i apply for a license i that's a good question i'm not sure i don't think so as long as you have to as long as you're using the manual gearbox and you're not using the paddle shifter i think it's fine i don't think that'll be a problem i think that will still be a manual um um license if you pass there uh rusty uh rusty gaming to the best of my knowledge um yeah silver shorts what do you recommend for people who don't have a car to practice in and they have a driving test a uh, very simple get more driving lessons from an approved driving instructor that would be my advice there as well as doing other things like reading the rules of the road reading some books do i have some there that's the rules of the road book you can get that valuable document that's another great book there get it by brian o'leary uh, you can be gotten in most good bookshops and a few bad ones too. Some good information there. I'm actually writing a book myself at the moment. I hope to update you more on that as time goes on. Uh, my, I'm hoping to have it released uh, this year. All going to plan, of course. And it'll be a book on how to pass a driving test where I will be sharing with you all my tips and having it all in the one uh, little book. 
So hope to ha have more information on that. But if you can't do, uh, if you don't have your own car, get lessons, read, read the books that I said here, um, do some online theory tests. You can get an app as well for that and watch all my videos if you can. Um, you know, that's really all, all you can do. So best of luck to you though. Um, Silver Shorts. Catherine Noble, thank you, Dane. Just passed my test first time in Wicklow. You helped me so much. I'm very glad to hear that, Catherine. Well done on passing in Wicklow. And now you have your full license, so that's great news. Costell again. Catherine, can you please tell me what questions you got asked? Yeah, okay. Um, generally, they'll ask you like about the yellow box like I have here. They might ask about the clearway. No stopping or parking various traffic lights, maybe stuff on pedestrian crossings, overtake on the left, they might ask a few bits on tires, or if your brake pedal is a bit spongy, might mean your brake fluid is low, or might mean there's a problem with your brakes. Um, road markings, always good to know road markings, continuous white line, solid white line, uh, hard shoulder, what's that mean, what's the rule of the clear way, things like that, so just try and know your, your theory as best you can, I can help you out with that if you want to email me. Um, Costello only did 15 hours of driving lessons now. I have my test in less than a week. That's great. Yeah, I think you mentioned that, Costello. And the very best of luck to you with your test. Let me know how you get on. Um, just take it one road at a time. Don't think of it as one big, huge road. Just think of it, break it down into specific roads, and you'll be fine, hopefully. Victor Darlos, I think. Hi, then. Will testers be asked to drive independently throughout the test, or do they only follow the instructor's commands? Victor, they only follow the instructor's commands for now. There is a pilot scheme on independent driving coming up soon in Waterford and Dundalk, as I mentioned. But for now, it's only the commands of the tester, not the instructor, the tester, okay? The instructor is the teacher, like me. Uh, it's the instructor, the tester is the examiner. So um, so just just the, the, the person doing the test will just follow the instructor's commands, yeah. Um, could you please tell me... Is it okay to come out of gear in traffic or muddy? Must it stay in gear? This is from Oliver Casey Plunkett. You can do either, um, Oliver. I recommend that you wait in first gear if you're at or near the top of the queue. Uh, but if you're further back, it's probably better to wait in neutral because you can give your foot a rest. But the answer to your question, Oliver, is you can do either one. It's fine. It's not, it's no problem. Like, but, um, if you wait in neutral, okay, you come out of gear. That means if the light goes green and you're top of the queue, and if you're if you're delayed moving off, then it could count against you. If you're a little bit slow moving off, okay, so just just bear that in mind. But you can do either one. Like it's not it's not like it's one. It's not like you have to do one or the other. You know. Okay then, folks. Uh, let me see. I'm just gonna get my comments back here. Where are we? Um, let's see. Sorry, I don't know. I'm just going to get through these last few comments here then. Just find them there. I just lost my comment. I just want to find my comments here. Um, Where was I? Just bear with me there. God, I've got a fair few comments to get through, folks, here. Um... Where was I? Where was I? Here we go. Catherine, Catherine Noble. Can't remember them all. He, oh, this is about the questions that you might be asking the drive at the start of the driving test. He asked me what the double yellow lines mean. Yeah, so no parking at any time. What to do when there's a green light and it turns to amber? So you should stop unless it's unsafe to stop. And how would you identify a zebra crossing at night? That would be to, with the flashing amber lights or beacons. Okay. Caitlin Miles says, best of luck. Yes, I'll echo that to Costell. And Catherine Noble, when would you dip your headlights at night? Uh, so you, di you dip your headlights, you know, if you're meeting oncoming traffic or meeting a pedestrian, that kind of stuff. And he asked some road signs as well, of course, yeah. Okay, then. So Kira O'Connor taking a test in Wicklow. And he, Kira's asking for tips, I think, from, from Catherine. Yeah, we'll get down to that there now. So... Um, can I bring my car somewhere to see if it's roadworthy or do I have to do the checks myself? Bit unsure. Well, you could bring it to a mechanic or somewhere like Advanced Pit Stop or Fast Fit Tires, one of these places, yeah. Um, you could. If you're not sure, you should get it checked out because you know you don't want to be caught out by that. 
quirt, quirts or something there passed my test back in October and I attribute it to watching your videos. Thank you. You're very welcome, uh, Quirtson. I'm glad I was able to help you. Um, I'm, I'm glad to help you uh, get you in, uh, point you in the right direction there. Fiona asks, how do I take a right turn when there's a car parked on the left and it forces me to go onto the right side of the world? I don't want, I oh, yeah, I answered that already, Fiona. Yeah. Is it possible to use my instructor's car? Asks then. Yes, it is. You can certainly use your instructor's car. Just make sure <coughs> you book it early so it's not so you so you have it booked in safely. But you can use your own car or you can use the driving school instructor's car, but they won't provide a car for you, okay? The driving some people have asked me, do the driving test centre, do they provide a car? Absolutely not. They do not. Sean Clerken passed in Fingal. Well done, Sean on passing in Fingal. Great to hear that. Um you're very welcome for saying thanks there. Thank you, Sean. Um Nishan something there. Hi oh, then I failed my driving test yesterday. Uh, can I send you? Yes, you can send me on the results and I'll, and I'll email you back some feedback there, Nishtan, daintai at gmail.com, certainly. Fionn, Duncan, how do you take a right-hand turn when there's a car parked on the left and it forces you on? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just comments coming up again. I've already answered that. Karina says, Dane, pre-test, done a pre-test, sorry, two weeks ago. Same thing, was told to pretend to use my automatic handbrake by the teacher Definitely won't be doing that on the day. That sounds ridiculous. All right, Karina. I mean, if if you need to use your handbrake, use it. Um, I'm not sure what I mean by pretend, but sounds like someone's trying to someone's acting a maggot there and trying to trying to teach some shortcuts. But you should use the handbrake at lights on a hill. If you're stopped over five or six seconds, um, and when parking, of course, you know. So just use the handbrake for the right reasons, not to try and pretend uh, something to the tester. Mohammed Umar asks, is it our legal right to know about the action report because the examiner is not explaining our mistakes? See, some examiners will will give good feedback, some won't. They should. There's no kind of legal right there, to the best of my knowledge, Mohammed, but it certainly is better when they do explain things, yeah. Veseline then asks, uh, oh, she passed her test, is it? Or his, him, sorry. Your videos have helped a lot. Glad to hear that, Vesselin. Uh, thanks for getting in touch. Uh, glad to help. Nishan, hi then. I failed my driving test yesterday. Yes, you can send on the report, yeah. Uh, what level would you say is needed to pass the driving test? Novice 1 is novice and 10 being experienced driver. Well, you'd need to be up around 7, I'd say there, Robert, at least. At least 7. Pram, pr Pram mood, I think. I uh, says it's impossible to pass driving test. No, it's, it's absolute nonsense, Pramud. If you're good enough and you prepare well enough, you can pass the first time. Remember, don't listen to any of these ridiculous conspiracy theories. The harder you work, the better you prepare, the more chance you have of passing. TC passed on Monday. Great stuff. Only had the learners thing for seven months. Videos were helped. Glad to hear that, uh, TC. Well done in passing. Rebecca Mason, one more question. Um, going from I think going from fourth gear. 56 kilometers to second gear when approaching a roundabout store moving traffic without keeping the clutch down while braking is it hang on how's it so for i struggle with going from fourth gear to second gear when approaching a roundabout store moving traffic without keeping the foot down while braking is this okay without keeping the clutch down well you don't want to you don't want to cautiously so like you would you would brake but then when you go into gear, you have to come slowly off the clutch, okay? Um, if you keep on the brake gradually, it should help you, you know? But you, you, you cannot stay on the clutch for too long there, Rebecca, because that's gonna you're going to be done for coasting there then, okay? Check out my video on more control. Just type in Dane Tai more control, and you'll, you'll see me advising you there on how to have more control come to junctions and roundabouts. Nazuko unfortunately failed apply for second attempt can you please name the book to help us yeah it is uh get it by oh there we go get it by brian o'leary uh, a good book to help you you can also check out the videos read the rsa rules of the road book as well and get lessons and practice and hopefully that will help you da zoom passed well done da zoom mark souder get it book yes certainly good book uh, hit some likes guys says Ed Mundus. That's great Ed Mundus. Appreciate the support there. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a like, folks. Liam McHugh, where was this driving test? Not sure which test you're talking about there. Um Aj Ajmatullah, I think. 
again thanks a lot for you're very welcome um starting your edt lessons best of luck with that my first time it's the first time i'll be driving do you think i should take more lessons as getting adi in bray is very difficult all are booked up well yeah you, you know knowledge is power so if you can if you can get more lessons that's great um you just kind of have to try and prepare and plan as best you can but um yeah if you can that will be a good option Valerie Munishi, Munish then a great instructor indeed. Watch all his videos and practice what he advises. And boom, get your license passed first time on Friday because of his videos. Thank you very much, Valerie, and well done on passing. Great news. Great to hear you found the videos useful. Kyron Leahy, I think, driving test tomorrow. Thanks for the tips. You're very welcome, Kyron, and best of luck to you. Hope all goes well for you on the test. Costell uh, says good luck to someone, Nicolina. One theory question is, is grade one already? What about a few wrong? Well, if you get three or more wrong, it's, it's a grade two. But if you only get a few wrong, it's a it's a grade one, okay? Uh, so that's what that. Nicolina asked them when entering a roundabout, if I miss my slot to get in and then have to wait to get in, is that considered a grade two for progress? Yes, it could be. Um, it all depends on how slow you were. You know, if, if it's, you know, if you were just a little bit cautious, probably grade one, but if you're, Oh, too cautious in the test size grade two it's going to depend on the situation but try not to dwell on it you know if it happens it happens just move on and just think about the next road then oscar lawler just wanted to cop on and say i passed first time in longford and videos were great have great thank you very much oscar glad, glad to hear that and well done on passing and uh, enjoy your full license Nishant, uh, hi then, I failed yesterday, sorry to hear that, can I send you the results? Yes, you can, I think I've already answered that, some of the comments are kind of coming up again. Thierry on Saturday for Dean Collins, best luck Dean, best luck, prepare for that and you should be fine. Costell, anyone here that has a test in Tala or done the test there? Yeah, good question. Fionn, do you swerve in and out of parked cars when there's a junction ahead? and not when there's no jump well generally you don't want to be swerving fun so it's better to drive in a straight line like a nice straight line um but you may have to come in if there's no space for two cars and the park cars are on your side then you'll have to give way so but try avoid swerves though fax comes on to say you've great content thank you very much fax glad to hear that um let me see there folks i'm just gonna last the comments there um was a fax edit test on friday best of luck to you edit mark Souler. uh i applied on the 8th estimate is the 21st of march based on your comments the chance will be, yes good chance will be sooner there mark according to what the people are saying there yeah nicolina um edit i have my mind tomorrow i think the test i'm so bad with exams and nerves i watched dan's videos on this is advice to smile when you start getting nervous think about how good you did so far yeah thank you very much Nicol nicolina my number one fan i have a video on driving test nerves or on how to beat the nerves so check that out there um mark Soller, thanks you're very welcome mark um hope you win the lottery as well mark kira curran test on thursday hopefully second time lucky best of luck kira thank you hope the videos help you um chad if the speed limit is 60 would the test remind if i go 65 68 well if it's 60 just kind of don't go any higher than 60 or 61 or two you know don't go any any higher than that you don't want to take any risks um it, there is a bit of flexibility above and below 60 but maybe not 65 though prod um pradeep uh past test just watching the videos great stuff pradeep well done on passing caitlin miles is it possible to pass your test if you only do lessons and aren't getting practice it is possible but it's probably difficult you know it's going to depend on the driver there caitlin but the best of luck to you caitlin mccabe failed four times last summer sorry to hear that my learning permit was expiring last month so i tried once more i've done no lessons watch your videos past but you know, that's great news only three marks very good very very good so well done to you um caitlin um uh, so it's going to finish up here now folks with these comments the uh, T Cat TV or something. Hi then. On um on Friday I had my test but failed on the right turn. I was in filter lane but moved in too late. After the light turn green, can you really fail from moving? Late? Well, it depends on the situation. See, if you move in too late and too abruptly, um, and there's a car behind you, it might not look good. It depends on the situation. See, the tests are made a judgment there. 
it is possible to fail on that, but I don't know the specifics of your case. Ado says, best of luck to Kira. Certainly, I'll let go of that. Super Bob, quick question. Do you have to take off the hubcaps for the test? Uh, no, no, you certainly don't, unless there's some issue with them, but no, you don't have to take them off, no. Videos are helpful. Thank you very much, Harry. The Hammonds music, if you're willing to travel from Bray, Bray uh, uh, Ballybrack, I use Ladybirds. Yeah, Ladybirds is a good option for some people. You're also driving around Dun Leary test routes while learning. Yeah, good advice. Do you have to wear a face mask? To the best of my knowledge, yes, Henry, you have to wear a face mask from next week in the test. They haven't eased the rules for the driving tests, um, to the best of my knowledge. So, last few comments, folks. The Hammonds, their test on Tuesday. Well, the best of luck, even if it didn't go well, remember, you might have got the mistakes out of the way. Um, but just try and reflect on what happened. Uh, and just try and focus on how you can improve, okay? Albert Walsh asking for a friend. She's got to learn a permit. Can she apply for the test now? And book a date for six months time. Well, it's, I mean, you have to do the twelve lessons first. You see, you you're not going to be, you're not going to, you're not going to do the test. You're not going to apply for the test without doing the lessons. Like you're not going to get a date until the twelve lessons are done. So the main thing for your friend Albert is to focus on the lessons. Uh, do that first. Get the twelve lessons done, and then worry about the test. Henry. It will help with more videos on reverse around the corner. I have a few on reverse around the corner, but hope hope to make more, Henry. Thanks for the tip. Neve Smith then, finally, I think, attempt to test without lessons, really struggling to find an instructor. Yeah, I know, it is tricky. Think about maybe trying different towns, maybe. But I know, Neve, it is it is tricky. Uh, a lot of them are very busy at the moment. Okay, folks, going to leave it there. Just want to say a big, big thank you to all of you out there for your support and for taking part in this live stream. I hope you found it useful. Um, I want to wish you all the best if you're learning whether you're doing a test, whether you just passed. The very, very best look to you. And thanks for being with me tonight. And remember, you can always email me at daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions or any queries, okay? So the very, very best look to you, folks. Thanks for being with me tonight. And all the best. Good night to you.